That's right, everybody. Duke is back. First off, I want to cover that this game is absolutely not for kids. It's not a rated M game like Halo is, which might as well be rated teen. This is a strong M rated game. Now that that's out of the way, the good news is Duke is as lewd as he's ever been. In Duke Nukem Forever, they take Duke's character and turn him into a larger than life legend, which boosts his ego to the point where it's actually become his health system. So, I suppose when Duke starts getting down on himself, that's when Duke dies. It's almost like a bad Chuck Norris joke. Only Chuck Norris can kill Chuck Norris. In this case, only Duke can kill Duke. Oh, man! That is... I mean, I don't understand any of it, but I bet if I did, that guy over there would still have his arm. And at least one of his balls. Go get him, Duke! You got this! There are several ways to expand your ego bar in this game by doing things that boost your ego. For example, you can go ahead and bench press some weights, you can go ahead and do humiliating kills to enemies, or you can go ahead and admire yourself in the mirror. And all of this boosts Duke's ego permanently, so this way you have a higher health bar. The gameplay in Duke Nukem Forever is pretty basic. It's just run around, kill bad guys, pick up weapons, uh, occasionally you gotta go ahead and fetch some items, to continue on but other than that they actually make a reference to key cards and how stupid that is um, early on in the game so it's good to know that you're not running around looking for the red key card to open the red door you know the downside of this gameplay is it's very very repetitive every level is basically the same you go into a room you solve a couple of puzzles usually by jumping on some objects or putting uh, some weighted objects into something and then you go clear out a room of bad guys, and then you go ahead and go into another room, solve some more puzzles, clear some more bad guys, and then there you go, you got a boss fight. The bosses in the game luckily are really, really big and they're really, really cool. Um, they go ahead straight up and tell you that you can only attack bosses with explosive weapons or turrets or basically big guns, which kind of makes it a little cheap. Um, they used to go ahead and make you kill bosses with X amount of ammo, and if you missed, you'd have to resort to the pistol or punching them or whatever. In this game, you can't do that. Generally, you don't run out of ammo when you're fighting a boss because they'll go ahead and give you unlimited weapons caches. So the boss fights really aren't that hard. Sometimes you have to figure out a little trick to beat them, but besides that, they're pretty straightforward. Also part of the gameplay, which is definitely worth mentioning, is they make you shrink down into a mini duke. So you're, you're about the size of a 6 inch action figure. It's actually really cool there for a little bit, but I'd say about 25% of the game, or at least it feels like a quarter of the game, you're a mini duke running through walls, fighting rats, trying to avoid full size enemies, which will obviously kill you a lot easier when you're this way. Like I said, it's a cute little novelty, but they really overplayed it in this game. Just like with the driving sequence, they made it far too long in my opinion. It's pretty cool for a little bit to drive around, jump in ramps. It's, it's a nice little break from the normal gameplay, but it is overdone. They should have made that a lot shorter. You have your standard fair weapons in the game that you'll be familiar with if you played Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, the downside is you can only carry two weapons at a time versus Duke Nukem where you can carry like eight or nine. So you have to choose your weapons more wisely. And to be honest with you, not every weapon is good in every situation. So you're going to find out that the shotgun's probably the most versatile gun in this game. I'm not going to really spoil that for you because you're going to figure that one out real quick anyway. So I would recommend having that with you and then pick up something else, whatever you like, uh, to take down everybody else. The game does have a few funny moments that go ahead and refer to other games, such as Halo. Uh, they refer to Valve, they refer to Gears in this. I hate Valve puzzles. And they're kind of funny, where Duke wants to basically prop himself up above all of them. Which, if this game was really the game that we all hoped it was, I could see them doing that. But to be honest with you, the last time Duke made one of these references, I was far enough into the game to realize this game can't touch the games that it's actually making fun of. Overall, the game's not that bad. It's a lot of fun to get back into Duke's shoes and just kill stuff while Duke's ranting out obscenities all over the place. It is 
pretty fun. When you beat the game, they go ahead and give you the developer's timeline from 1998 all the way until now. And I went ahead and checked that out. It looks like the single-player campaign was actually finished in 2009, which goes ahead and explains why the game feels very dated. A lot of the puzzle solving in this game is very, very boring, repetitive, and tedious. Nowadays, most shooters, you go ahead and you just shoot things and you continue on. Occasionally, you have to solve some minor mini-game puzzles. This game, as I said, it's part of the normal gameplay, the normal game flow. Every level, there are puzzles. Every little while, you fight some bad guys, and you know you're going to have to solve a puzzle or do some jumping, platforming thing. And that definitely feels like it belonged in the early 2000s. A lot of games back then used to do it. Pretty much in the post-Halo era, we don't see that anymore. And there's a reason why it was really boring, and a lot of people got frustrated with it. There are definitely some times that I wanted to stop playing this game, but I wanted to get this review done for you guys, so I didn't. To be honest with you, I can only recommend this game for Rent It. That is going to be our official stance on it. It's worth renting. If your friends got it, play it over there. You're going to play it through. It's going to be pretty humorous. You're going to have some fun and some laughs, but overall, this game is not that good. Um, I really wish it was. Uh, to be honest with you, I was looking forward to this game probably more than anything else this year and it was definitely not what we all hoped it was going to be. They did deliver on some aspects, and those are fun, and those are very enjoyable, that's why I suggest you rent it, but I cannot recommend this game as a permanent part of your collection.